Well, you might call it a dog, but it looks more like a teddy bear. We have got Pembroke Welsh Corgis in the studio today. They are ruling the roost. And Melanie Hotz is a very proud <laughs> owner. Um, oh, my goodness. Melanie, what do you bring me here? This looks like a little fluffy toy. He is adorable. What is his name? Oh, he's called Mr. G. Mr. G. Oh, another G unit in Which the house. Which is Mr. Gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> I, can, I can certainly agree with that. They are a beautiful breed. We've got his mother here. What, what's the mother's name? Uh, Mum's name is Pepper. Pepper is very alert, yes, um, protecting her little boy. They are a gorgeous breed to look at. Beautiful show animals. Tell us a little bit about the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Um, well, they were, uh, it's a breed that comes from Wales, from the, the county of Pembrokeshire, as opposed to the cardigan corgis who come from Cardiganshire. Um, they kind of like developed side by side. So the uh, cardigan corgis eventually ended up herding sheep, and the Pems ended up herding cattle. Wow. So they're actually cattle herders. And oh my goodness. They used to drive the cattle all the way from Wales to London in the olden times. and. Was this a particularly short back. breed of cattle that we were dealing with? Uh, well, I suppose the Welsh cattle <laughs> could be a bit small because they live on the mountains, but, but yes. And um, clearly they punch a bit above their weight class then. They, they obviously have to be fairly independent and strong-willed yes, to they be able are. to perform that. And also they've got, for their size, about the strongest bite of all dogs. I, I felt that a little nip there. He's got some wonderful little teeth coming through already. So they can sort cows out quite easily. Um, yeah. as, as a domesticated animal, as um, a beautiful pet, mm. they look very loyal and very affectionate. Tell us a bit about the breed um, here in South Africa. What do we have to be aware of when owning corgis? Well, um, look, with corgis, um, they are strong-willed, yes. So you've got to be aware that they don't rule you. <laughs> um, it's corgis have been known to take over houses. And How, how's that battle going for you? Oh, yeah? No, this is fine. <laughs> we, we've sorted them, thank you. <laughs> But they are stunning animals. If you want to go up the mountain, they'll go up the mountain with you. If you want to stay by the fire and read a book, they'll stay by the fire. So they are very adaptable, but they are, can be out there and as busy as you like. Um, as well, very good watchdogs. Got a big bark for their size. Um, and they're just gorgeous, you know. They're there and they're cuddly and you can pick their nice lap dog size. Mm, especially when they come in this package. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. I, I don't <laughs> think there is anyone in the studio that hasn't um, picked him up, culled him, ruffled his hair. Um, when we look at some of those, those idiosyncrasies and those defects creeping in that are breed specific, are there areas that we have to be aware of with a corgi? Uh, fortunately, not too much. Um, there is a little bit of hip dysplasia in. But when you think of that there are dwarf dogs, um, hips can be a problem anyway. But if you keep them trim, don't let them get overweight, um, you shouldn't actually have any problems. Exercising, I know the, the, the issue with small dogs is that the, the thought is that they often they can just be left inside the house and that that is enough for them. How often do you have to exercise and what sort of environment do they need to live in? Um, look, they, they like to be kept busy. You must keep your dog's interest up. Clearly, so yeah. <laughs> a walk, at least one walk a day would be great. Um, they, you know, if you're going to sit, turn your dog into a couch potato, you must as well get a stuffed dog from a toy shop. You <laughs> yeah, <know? laughs> exactly, exactly. And then resources for corgi owners here in South Africa. Um, where can we go to get information? What is a, a good starting point? Um, well, there are two corgi clubs in South Africa. There's one in uh, the Transvaal, which has now just given themselves the most unpronounceable name. <laughs> um, and there is another one north. in the Cape, which is <laughs> the Cape Welsh Corgi Club. Um, so you can always get in contact with them through the Kennel Union. Um, there are some fly-by-night backyard breeders in corgis, unfortunately. Uh, but the ones, the corgis in Cape Town is a lovely community. I mean, we go to shows, we have an absolute ball. Um, we're all great friends, which is nice in dogdom at the moment. And um, when we make up a champion, we all have champagne and something the next Celebrate show. Celebrate together. So it's great, I like yes. that. Um, then I have to ask, are all puppies as cute as, as him? I mean, come Absolutely. on. Absolutely. <laughs> I think you've got something special. <laughs> Melanie, thank you so much. They are enchanting, a very proud mom as well. Um, but thank you so much for enlightening us on a beautiful breed. No, thank you very much. you've got a winner there. Oh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> that was yeah, Melanie Hodge talking about the Pembroke mm, Corgi, the yeah. Welsh Corgi, and what a champion he is. We're going to take a very quick ad break. We'll continue the banana chocolatey madness after that. That we'll oh, see you in a yeah. sec. <laughs> Catlejo's got nothing on Bob. Bobtail, SA's most loved dog food for strong South African dogs. Yeah. 